Hello. Today, we're going to take a mathematical journey. We're going to discover something beautiful and completely natural about one of mathematics' most important functions. Let's start with something you probably already know. The factorial. For any positive integer n, the factorial n is simply the product of all positive integers from 1 up to n. For instance, 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 and 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. But here's an interesting question. What happens if we ask, what is 1 half factorial? Or what about pi factorial, or even 2.7 factorial? These questions don't make sense with the standard definition, right? How do you multiply from 1 to 1 half? It's not obvious at all. So today, we're going to discover a natural way to extend the factorial to any real number positive or negative, using only the tools of calculus and algebra. And the most beautiful part? This extension is so natural, so obvious, once you see it, that mathematicians have been using it for over 300 years. We're going to begin with something simple, the natural logarithm. Let's see where it takes us. Let's explore the derivatives of the natural logarithm. This might seem random at first, but I promise you it's going somewhere amazing. We start with the function g of x equals natural log of x. Now let's take the first derivative. The derivative of natural log x is 1 over x, simple enough. Now let's take the second derivative. The second derivative is negative 1 over x squared. The third derivative is 2 over x cubed. And the fourth derivative is negative 6 over x to the fourth power. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Let me show you something about these equations. Look at the numerators and the denominators. Look at those numbers in front. 1, then 1, then 2, then 6. Wait a minute, that's 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. This can't be a coincidence. In fact, there's a general pattern here. Let me show you the formula. For the nth derivative of natural log x, we get negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 times the quantity n minus 1 factorial, all times x to the negative n. This formula perfectly captures what we observed. Let me verify this works for n equals 3. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 factorial, which is 2, times x to the negative 3, gives us 2 over x cubed. Perfect. This matches our third derivative exactly. So we've discovered this beautiful pattern hidden inside the derivatives of the natural logarithm. Now let's take what we learned and build something more general. Let me define a new function. Let's call f sub n of x the quantity negative natural log x raised to the power n. This looks similar to what we were studying before. Let's compute its derivative using the chain rule. The derivative of f sub n is n times the quantity negative ln x to the power n minus 1, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1 over x. This simplifies to negative n over x times negative ln x to the power n minus 1, which we can write as negative n over x times f sub n minus 1 of x. So we have this beautiful relationship, the derivative of f sub n of x plus n over x times f sub n minus 1 of x equals 0. This relationship is going to be absolutely key to everything that follows. Now here's where we get clever. We need to find a function whose derivative gives us exactly what we want. We want to find a function h such that its derivative equals f sub n of x minus n times f sub n minus 1 of x. Let me try defining h as x times f sub n of x. Now let's apply the product rule. The derivative of h sub n is f sub n of x plus x times the derivative of f sub n. But remember our relationship? x times f prime sub n equals negative n times f sub n minus 1. So the derivative of our h function is exactly what we wanted. This is precisely the form we need. Isn't that beautiful? Now let's take our derivative equation and integrate both sides from 0 to 1 we're going to integrate both sides from 0 to 1. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, the left side becomes h evaluated at 1 minus h evaluated at 0. Now here's the magic. At x equals 1, we have 1 times negative natural log of 1 to the power n. But natural log of 1 is 0, so we get 1 times 0 to the power n, which is 0. At x approaching 0 from the right, we have x times negative natural log x to the power n. And this also approaches 0 by L'Hopital's rule. So the left side equals 0. This gives us an amazing result. The integral from 0 to 1 of f sub n equals n times the integral from 0 to 1 of f sub n minus 1. 
This is a recurrence relation. Do you see where we're going? Let me define something new using everything we've discovered. Let lambda of n equal the integral from 0 to 1 of negative natural log x raised to the power n dx. In other words, lambda of n is just the integral of our function f sub n. And from our work, we know that lambda satisfies this recurrence relation. Lambda of n equals n times lambda of n minus 1. Now here's the key. What's our base case? Lambda of 0 equals the integral from 0 to 1 of negative natural log x to the power 0, which is just 1 dx. The integral of 1 from 0 to 1 is simply 1. So let's unfold this recurrence relation. Lambda of 1 equals 1 times 1, which is 1 factorial. Lambda of 2 equals 2 times 1 factorial, which is 2 factorial. Lambda of 3 equals 3 times 2 factorial, which is 3 factorial. Do you see what's happening? Lambda of n equals n factorial. For all positive integers n, our lambda function gives us exactly the factorial. This is no coincidence. We've constructed it to do exactly this. Now here comes the brilliant part, the truly beautiful part. Look back at everything we did. We took derivatives, we created products, we integrated, we applied the fundamental theorem of calculus. Here's the thing. Nowhere in our entire derivation did we require n to be an integer. We never divided by n. We never assumed n was a whole number. Everything works just as well if n is any real number. So let's define lambda for any real number s greater than negative 1 as follows. Lambda of s equals the integral from 0 to 1 of negative natural log x to the power s dx. And here's the amazing part. The exact same mathematical proof shows us that lambda of s equals s times lambda of s minus 1. This is it. This is the natural extension of factorial to all real numbers. We can now write lambda of s equals s factorial for any real number s greater than negative 1. This means we can compute 1 half factorial. We can compute pi factorial. We can compute factorial for any real number we want. Now let's actually compute something concrete. Let's find what 1 half factorial equals. We need to evaluate lambda of 1 half, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of negative natural log x dx. Let me make a substitution. Let t equal negative natural log x. Then x equals e to the negative t, and dx equals negative e to the negative t dt. When x goes from 0 to 1, t goes from infinity to 0. After the substitution, our integral becomes the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the 1 half power times e to the negative t dt. Now let me make another substitution. Let u equal the square root of t. Then t equals u squared and dt equals 2u du. This gives us the integral from 0 to infinity of 2u squared times e to the negative u squared du. Now integrals of this form involving e to the negative u squared are called Gaussian integrals and they have well-known solutions. When we evaluate this integral using Gaussian integral techniques, we get lambda of 1 half equals square root of pi divided by 2. Therefore, 1 half factorial equals square root of pi divided by 2. Let me summarize what we've discovered today. First, we extended the factorial function from just integers to all real numbers. This is profound. Second, we did this using only basic calculus and logarithms, no complex analysis, no advanced functions just pure mathematics flowing naturally from simple principles. Third, our lambda function satisfies a beautiful recurrence relation. Lambda of s equals s times lambda of s minus 1. This is the defining property of factorial. And fourth, for all integers, our lambda function gives us exactly the factorial. It's a perfect extension, but wait, there's more. What we just discovered, what seemed like a natural extension, we invented ourselves. Mathematicians call this the gamma function. The relationship is gamma of s plus 1 equals s factorial, which equals our lambda of s. We didn't invent this. We rediscovered it. By following the natural path of mathematics, by asking good questions and letting calculus guide us, we arrived at one of the most important special functions in all of mathematics.